Small Xanthalasma Small xanthalasma are the small yellow to white lumps that initially appear on your eyelids near your nose. Initially they look harmless, appearing on a regular basis on the worldwide population that is over 40. They won't stay small xanthalasma for long. So, let's find the root cause of these small xanthalasma, so we can understand their implications and understand controlling them and also removing them before they get too large and there needs to be a surgical intervention to rebuild the eyelids. Xanthalasma should be considered as a marker of dyslipidemia, and a complete lipid profile that identifies more subtle lipid abnormalities that are still associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease should be implemented by your doctor or GP. It has also been reported that some patients with xanthalasma, such as individuals with high blood pressure or high cholesterol, have increased LDL, VLDL, and decreased HDL. For some a subtle lipid disorder is the main route cause of the small xanthalasma. Familial hypercholesterolemia and familial dyspatolipoproteinemia should also be considered in patients with xanthalasma at a young age. Although anyone can develop xanthalasma really, some patients with the condition suffer from an underlying primarily unrecognized condition that contributes to the formation of nodules. Small xanthalasma and lipid profile disorders. Secondary causes of lipid metabolism disorders can be a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol. One study found that cholesterol deposits on the eyelids are associated with an increased risk of heart attack and heart disease, even in people with normal lipid levels. People with cholesterol deposits should see a doctor to check their fat levels. Since xanthalasma is associated with high cholesterol, the medical community suggests bringing it under control. Improving cholesterol levels can help to slow the growths on the skin, and since it is associated with high cholesterol, Getting medication that is specific to reducing cholesterol levels may be a beneficial precursor to controlling a rampant cholesterol profile. This in turn should improve your lipid profile. Although lipids are insoluble in water, they can be combined with proteins to form compounds called lipoproteins. Common lipopsins are classified according to their size and weight, such as cholesterol, triglycerides, lipidase and lipophilic proteins. When atherosclerotic plaques form in the coronary artery and other arteries, the lipoproteins that ultimately lead to small xanthalasma can be identified as abnormalities in the blood. Xanthalasma has also been associated with a number of other types of atherosclerotic plaques, such as those associated with coronary heart disease, but no one fits neatly into the usual categories. Xanthalasma could represent a new class of abnormal lipoproteins, one of the most common causes of cardiovascular disease. It has been shown to cause a disorder, in which LDL receptors are lacking and LDL particles accumulate in the blood and other blood vessels, accompanied by increases in blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar and blood sugar levels. Patients with xanthalasma can be diagnosed with normal lipid values, so they have no increased risk of carotid artery atherosclerosis. Patients with hyperlipidemia should receive a formal cardiovascular risk assessment based on the appropriate table, and patients have their fasting fat levels checked. It is less common in younger patients, but patients who already have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol and blood sugar levels, as well as abnormal blood cholesterol levels, blood sugar levels or triglycerides, are more likely to have such a disease. How to get rid of small xanthalasma? There is a plethora of options on small xanthalasma removal, but in nearly all the cases of possible test uses of CO2 lasers, electrolysis, cryotherapy and so on, the plaques will in nearly every case come back, but this time with a vengeance and be a lot more than just a small xanthalasma. The two options that are known to work and also to prevent and stop regrowth in the area and that specifically don't leave scars in the treated area are surgery and a product called xanthal. Both are recommended treatments for small xanthalasma, if anything, the surgical option is excessively overpriced and more trauma-inducing for such small xanthalasma, so xanthal seems the best option, with a surprisingly affordable price tag, especially in comparison with the surgical option. For more research on not only small xanthalasma, but xanthalasma on the whole, explore xanthalasmatreatment.com or the main site, xanthal.com.